All right, well, uh, I've never done this before, but uh, I've seen a lot of people on the Out of the Park Baseball subreddit asking questions. How do I play this game? How do I do this? How do I do that? Um, I think at some point I will do sort of, or at least try to do a series where I play through maybe a whole season and explain uh, sort of my whole thinking process and every little decision I make, because I think that would be very helpful. Um, but I also sort of see uh, the community would benefit a lot from small tutorials like this that cover one topic, um, 10, 15 minutes tops, um, and hopefully I can just impart a little bit of wisdom. Uh, I'm not an expert by any means. I, um, my first out-of-the-park baseball game was um, 16. I put 20 hours in that just to kind of learn the ropes. Uh, I bought 18 at the All-Star break and promptly put about 200 hours into it, so I know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, there's still, I still don't know everything, but I am in a position now where I can definitely help new people because I do love this game. And um, I've also been there before <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you've just bought this game and you feel completely lost and you don't know what to do. Uh, totally been there before. It is so daunting. Um, this game actually does an okay-ish job of, of keeping it good enough for a casual player. Like, um, I've tried my hand at games like uh, uh, Football Manager, and uh, there's this game that I, uh, I bought, and it's called, uh, it's for the PC as well, it's called Crusader Kings 2, and it's like, uh, I don't even know how I'd describe it, like kind of a Civ type game that's um, kind of turn-based, and you basically play as like a some sort of medieval ruler and try to take over Europe. Um, but uh, it's it's unbelievably complicated and I was never able to wrap my brain around it. But this I'm able to wrap my head around. Uh, so I'm hoping to help. So uh, that's why, there goes my little intro. Um, as you can guess from the title of this video, uh, our first topic is platooning. Uh, so what exactly is platooning? Uh, well, I will explain once I get to the team menu screen. Um, but I've booted up this little league. It's just going to serve as our little test playground that, where I can help explain exactly what it is and how it works. And uh, we'll be playing as the Chicago Cubs. As you can see, I have commissioner mode turned on, so I'm going to be making some tiny little edits um, that just make things super easy for me. But trust me, uh, this will work no matter what kind of settings you have. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's select the Cubs and I will meet you at the team screen. Alrighty, we are here at the team screen. So, um, uh, first thing I'd, I'd just like to get out of the way, this uh, this little series is going to require at least a, a tiny bit of knowledge of how baseball works. Um, if you're the type of person that you don't know what a shortstop is, I, I'm afraid I can't help you uh, quite yet. Go familiarize yourself with just the very basics of baseball. Um, but if you're the type of guy who maybe isn't quite sure how arbitration works or how what the Rule 5 draft is or... Um, what fielding independent pitching is or just even how to navigate a lot of these menus uh, I'm totally your guy but just have a have a ground very base knowledge of baseball and uh, that'll that'll really help me out um, so we're gonna go look at our lineups now platooning uh, is the act of playing uh, lefty and righty uh, hitter versus pitcher matchups over the course of a season um, so what you would do for example is you would have two players uh, effectively playing one position over the course of the season. Uh, the most commonly platooned, or one of the most commonly platooned positions uh, in baseball right now is third base. I don't know why, but that just seems to be the hot place to platoon. Um, so uh, it's just to give an example, so let's say you are facing off in a series against, uh, let me think of a good team, let me think of a good team. Um, Oh, you're, playing, you're, you're playing against the San Francisco Giants, and um, your first game of the series is you're up against Madison Bumgarner, a lefty, and um, you're going to want a hitter at third base who hits lefties well, and chances are this is going to be a right-handed hitter because that's how these things usually work. Um, and then the next game in the series, uh, you're up against uh, Jeff Samarja on the mound, so he's a right-handed pitcher. And then um, to work that advantageously, you may find yourself wanting to use a left-handed batter against him. Um, so that's qu quite simply how it works. 
you're essentially combining two players uh, in the hopes that they'll do better um, using these matchups rather than if it was just one of them starting all 162 games. Um, so the reason I've chosen the Cubs for this, uh, one, the Cubs are good. Uh, that's simple enough. But two, the Cubs have uh, arguably the best for third baseman all of baseball. There's a, certainly a few that would uh, you could certainly have a debate about. But Chris Bryant, uh, I think, is an absolutely fantastic player. And um, today we're going to be asking ourselves what would happen if he retired. So we're going to retire Chris Bryant. Uh, it was a good career. It was a short career. He won Rookie of the Year, MVP, and a World Series. So, um, I mean, fantastic work, but he's done. Uh, I guess he uh, was raptured. He was raptured. He was, he was better than all of us, so it's okay. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, as the Cubs scramble with two days until opening day, kind of ask ourselves... Uh, how would you platoon this third base position? Um, the Cubs are actually a team that platoons a lot in real life. Uh, there, there've been a lot of platoons over the past couple of years, specifically switching between guys like Schwarber, Zobrist, and uh, Almora, and uh, Javi Baez. So um, this this is just part for the course for them, is what I'm getting at. Um, so there's two players I'm sort of going to basically. Uh, add to the team uh, one way or another um, so I'm gonna go so up here in the player search I've already sort of set up um, I have fielding at rating at third base is at least 50 on a 20 to 80 scale which is what I always use uh, 50 is average so we have effectively just filtered out everyone who can at least be an average third baseman from a defensive standpoint so that's good um, and, and in my view, uh, I have, I'm have i viewing batting ratings right now, but I actually have it customized a bit. Um, I can see the contact, power, and eye versus left-handed pitching, and the contact, power, and eye versus right-handed pitching. So I just have contact versus lefty sorted right now. Um, and the guy that I am looking for is none other than the former World Series hero, uh, David Fries. Uh, as you can see, Chris Bryant was a five-star player, David Freeze two-star player. Uh, star rating system, it's not the Bible. There's, I've had a lot of players who are good who are maybe only two or three stars. Um, it, these ratings are more important, like the contact and the gap power and how are they defensively. Um, but as you can see, he's, he's pretty mediocre starter, um, maybe even below average. As you can see, he's sort of just averaged uh, about two, two wins above replacement the past uh, three years, so that's, that's pretty remarkably average. Uh, but if you go into his ratings, you'll see that he is better against left-handed pitching than he is against right-handed pitching. Um, so as you can see on a 20 to 80 scale, contact is 50 versus 45, 50 versus 40 for gap power, and so on and so on. I don't have to read it out for you, you have eyeballs. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually clone him, because I don't want to screw around with, uh, what the pirates have going on because they are in the division um, so I'm going to clone him and add him to the Cubs later and the other player is I'm just sort of sorting my contact here now this is a, this this is a good way of sort of looking at if you're looking for a platoon mate uh, this is a decent way of going about doing things whether it's free agency um, or if you're gonna want to trade for somebody but the other guy I want to add is Connor Gillespie who's actually a uh, free agent to start the year. I don't know if he actually has found a team yet in real life, um, but as you can see, um, kind of the antithesis of David Freeze, and that's what will hopefully allow them to complement each other. His contact is 10 better on the uh, 20 to 80 scale. There, there've actually, there's actually a lot more um, exaggerated uh, gaps between the two. Like I've, I've seen players who or maybe like a 70 contact against righties who are only like a 40 against uh, lefties. It happens. Um, but this is this is a reasonable enough gap in terms of skill where you're hoping that this platoon will be better uh, than if it was just David Freeze starting every day or Connor Gillespie starting every day. So I'm just going to add uh, Gillespie. Uh, I'm just try I'm just getting used to commissioner mode. I've actually never used it in this game. Uh, it would be too tempting, but I've added him to the Cubs. He's on the Cubs now, and uh, I'm just going to come up here to MLB transactions. Uh, 
I understand a lot of the working around on the menus is uh, can be difficult. So we're going to free agents tab, and uh, our clone David Freeze should be here. Um, I'm going to change the position to third base. And there he is. Fantastic. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to add him to the Chicago Cubs. And we will sort of just roll through the whole year. And uh, But first I have to set up the platoon itself in the lineups menu. So, quite simple, against right-handed pitching, we are going to want Gillespie as our third baseman. Against left-handed pitching, we're going to want Freeze as our third baseman. And when there's DH lineups, uh, same thing. Uh, it'll be Gillespie. Uh, and then it will be Freeze against the lefties. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set whoever's playing third base to hit leadoff. That's not how you would normally construct this lineup at all. In fact, they, they would probably be hitting like 7th or 8th. Uh, but uh, it's just it will allow me to give each player more played appearances and thus sort of gather more data. So that's my thinking about this. Um, so one more thing I have to do is I have to actually remove a player because I've replaced. I'm gonna just move Chris Coughlin. Uh, he refuses to be demoted. I'm going to vaporize him off of the earth by retiring him. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to sim this whole season with injuries off anyways, so it, it really, uh, it's going to be a really uh, easy sim. I'm just going to turn off a bunch of settings uh, that'll so that'll make it go faster. Sim with no injuries, and we'll check in on the Cubs. Uh, will they still be able to win their division or at least make the playoffs with some tough competition from, we're going to guess, St. Louis and Milwaukee? Um, I mean, that's tough. They just lost Chris Bryant. They just lost arguably their best player. So we will see. But yeah, I will meet you guys on the other end of the simulation. And uh, we will look at the statistics um, and just hopefully uh, confirm that it works as a proof of concept. Uh, but if not, uh, hey, at least the thinking was there, right? All right, it is October 1st. Uh, baseball season is over. Boy, doesn't time fly. And uh, as you can see from this sort of left panel right here, we ended up winning the Central Division by one game, which is fantastic. Uh, another thing you may notice from our batting leaders, Connor Gillespie hit 305. Uh, that's a pretty exaggeratedly good result. I wasn't expecting that, but um, hopefully that ends up proving me right. Um, Cincinnati finished one game behind us. Terrific season for them. That's pretty unexpected. St. Louis uh, capturing the second wild card spot, three games behind us. So it was a, it was definitely a competitive division. Um, so to, to come out and win that without Chris Bryant uh, is definitely a good result for the Cubs, especially when you considered uh, sort of the slapdicks we had hitting leadoff. Uh, so let's look at our lineups and we can just sort of see how everyone ended up doing. So Gillespie, monster year, absolutely monster year. Uh, at least by his standards, uh, 305, 348, 449, 117 OPS plus. Uh, he was an above average hitter is, is what that number tells us, and he played solid defense. He was worth 4.3 wins above replacement alone. Fantastic. I mean, that's, a, that's an incredible result, actually. And then David Fries, his battery mate, uh, I'm just gonna go fuck myself. Uh, he was terrible. He was completely ass terrible. Why was he so bad? Fuck you, David Freeze. Platooning works. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm a little shocked. I well, you know, you can see that half of it worked. You could probably say at this point, okay, why don't you start Gillespie for every every bit? Because you know he has, he still hit well against the lefties, but whatever. He uh, platooning is a good idea when you can do it, at least in concept. That's the lesson. Uh, sometimes you sign a guy that sucks. Uh, 
you know, maybe this is a case where Baez should have platooned and, or something like that. Uh, things happen. But uh, yeah, platooning. It will let Connor Gillespie have a four war season, and it'll also make David Freeze suck donkey balls. That's baseball. All right, well, uh, at least I could explain what platooning is. Uh, whether I proved that it works or not, uh, debatable. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we've all learned something today. And uh, yeah, cool. Uh, I'll see you guys for the next tutorial. Don't know what that'll be, but hopefully it'll make me look less like a jackass. All right, see you guys later.